Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to today's APO Productivity Talk. This is Kay from the APO Secretariat in Tokyo. Today's P-Talk topic is enhancing productivity and sustainability through eco-industrial parks. Eco-industrial parks represent an innovative, holistic approach to industrial development, which marries economic growth with environmental stewardship. These parks, often strategically designed and located, aim to create synergies among industries, fostering resource efficiency, waste minimization, and sustainable practices. Unlike traditional industrial zones, eco-industrial parks emphasize collaboration, where one company's waste becomes another's resource, leading to a more circular and regenerative economic model. In our pursuit of productivity, eco-industrial parks offer a new paradigm. They prioritize the optimization of processes, energy consumption, and material flows, thereby enhancing overall productivity while minimizing ecological impacts. Through integrated planning, shared infrastructure, and the application of eco-friendly technologies, Eco-industrial parks offer a roadmap to simultaneously boost economic output and reduce the environmental footprint. Today, we will have an opportunity to learn about the multifaceted benefits of eco-industrial parks and their potential to usher in a future where prosperity and environmental integrity go hand in hand. To talk more about this interesting topic, we are pleased to have Dr. Hung Sok Park, Distinguished Chair Professor of Ulsan College in the Republic of Korea with us today. He is an industrial ecologist and professional environmental engineer with over 30 years of experience in water treatment and management, waste treatment and valorization, resource efficiency and cleaner production, industrial symbiosis, urban metabolism, and environmental projects and businesses. Dr. Park will explain the implementation of productivity concepts within eco-industrial parks, fostering resource efficiency, cleaner production, and industrial symbiosis to drive inclusive, sustainable industrial development and Korean eco-industrial parks as a collective innovation process by enhancing productivity and sustainability. After his presentation, there will be a Q&A session. If you have any questions for Dr. Park, please leave them in the YouTube chat box, along with your name and country. Hello, Dr. Park. Great to see you. Thank you. Uh, nice introduction. I appreciate you being here with us today. And I would like to ask you to begin your presentation. OK. It's my, uh, it's my honor to have this opportunity to share my experience on Eco Industrial Park. Today, my topic is enhancing uh, productivity and sustainability through eco industrial park. So, my presentation is composed of uh, four components. Uh, one is that uh, environment and uh, human, and the systems approach of productivity. And then I introduce the eco industrial park. Then uh, we will share the uh, Korean eco industrial park uh, initiative. Uh, this figure shows you the uh, only Earth taken uh, from the space. Uh, the Earth is a closed system. Uh, this means that uh, materials and energy, energy can transfer to uh, the Earth, but material can be uh, transferred to outside. This is energy balance of Earth systems. The Earth system is operated by solar radiation, mainly uh, UV and optical and uh, infrared. The radiation is coming to uh, ecosphere, and then uh, this the anthrop anthroposphere is utilizing this energy to produce the product and services, and the uh, the emit the emit uh, the pollutant, and then uh, the remaining uh, energy is ready to uh, Earth radiation to outside through the uh, infrared. Industrial production and consumption systems use environment as a source of resources and uh, a sink of the emissions. So simply, the environment 
provide the essential resources and services that sustain the living forms on Earth so that a human economic system is integral part of the uh, global biosphere. This is the uh, population change during uh, the human history. Uh, as you can see uh, in this uh, slide, the population is very rapidly changing uh, from the prehistory to the uh, modern ages. You can see the uh, from the old Stone Age, the new Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, and the Middle Age, and uh, modern age. This means that uh, productivity innovation, the productivity enhance means that the uh, product is increased to support the human population. So the human population growth is totally connected to productivity enhancement. So I will uh, talk on the uh, a systematic approach on the, uh, the productivity from the uh, process. Process is nothing but transformation of the material energy to the product. So uh, energy and water and other auxiliary, auxiliary uh, material utilized and then pro pro produce the product. But the emission is produced. Emission and byproduct is also produced. So this process can be uh, conceptualized that uh, simply the input, output, and productivity. So in this pro in this schematics, you can see input can be very diverse factors: land, fuel, uh, capital, facility, equipment, tools, energy materials, and even the information. And this uh, process transform this input to goods and services for consumers. And we can simply uh, make uh, some indicator the productivity. The productivity, nothing but the uh, output over the input. This is focusing on the uh, production quantity. So if you add the uh, process together, it can be a plant. So this is a simple uh, schematics of soap production plant from the oil and pet. The pro process is seriously connected to produce a soap product. All the process use resource and energy and produce uh, emission. So in product, plant productivity can be uh, conceptualized like this. Uh, input and transformation of a product uh, from process one, two, three, four. And then uh, total productivity is represented by same as over uh, output over input. So this is uh, industrial park. Industrial park is collect of the uh, industry in the designated area. So the industrial park productivity can be presented like this in the industrial park is a kind of a system. Many different plant is located in industrial park and industrial park productivity can be represented output over input, the same as uh, process and plant. But uh, industrial, pro industrial uh, park is for the economic growth, mainly for economic growth. So industrial park in special region or special area uh, is kind of economic growth engine of the region or the uh, area, the city, but it also can be a source of pollution. So due, due to this uh, pollution issues, uh, industrial park have transformed from the uh, developing countries, developed countries to developing country in uh, late 90s. So uh, industrial park or industrial infrastructure in the urban area or the uh, close to urban uh, sectors is always a uh, big environmental conflict between community and industrial sector. So many advanced country, industrial uh, infrastructure is moving to developing countries in 
uh, late 1980s to early uh, 90s. So, uh, so new uh, production strategy is considered in late, late uh, 1980s. The these two gentlemen, Frost and Galos Poros, they are thinking differently how they can make a very uh, smart manufacturing strategies, mimicking the uh, natural ecosystems. In natural ecosystems, you can see the producer and consumer and decomposers are working together using the solar energy and they can uh, collaborate to maximize the production and minimize the pollution. So in ecosystem, there is no waste. Uh, so uh, these two gentlemen are thinking waste from one industrial process can serve as a raw material for the another. Then uh, they can enhance the uh, productivity and they can reduce the uh, pollution. So this is the main idea of uh, industrial symbiosis. This industrial symbiosis is finding in the Kalumburg uh, cases. As you can see, the small uh, Kalumburg industrial district, small, uh, all the industrial industries are collaborating. The collaboration networking started in 1961 and annually, they are slowly extending the uh, networking to uh, be all the uh, companies are connected to maximize the productivity and reduce the pollution. So this sample case is conceptualized as eco-industrial park. As you can see in this figure, uh, in this eco-industrial park is a community of manufacturing and service businesses located in a common property. Uh, these members are seeking uh, enhanced environmental, economic and social performance through industrial symbiosis. So eco-industrial park is nothing but to collaborate, to manage the environmental and economic and the social issues together in industrial park level. So this concept can be applied in newly developed industrial area or the industrial area which uh, is constructed in the traditional concept, just the clustering area. And uh, this concept is all also applied to the newly brownfield redevelopment uh, cases. So in Korean cases, uh, in 1960s, uh, Koreans start to industrialization based on the uh, national industrialization policies. So based on this uh, national uh, industrial policy, government construct many industrial park in the uh, in the Korean Peninsula. So there are so many uh, environmental issues. So the eco industrial park initiative is nothing but to enhance the productivity and sustainability through uh, RCP and industrial symbiosis to maintain the company to stay there not to moving to developing countries and to create the jobs. So uh, Korean, uh, EI, Korean industrial park is nothing but growth engine of Korean economy. Uh, so as you can see in uh, 2022, we have almost 130, uh, 1,300 industrial parks in Korea uh, from 1960s uh, to until 2010, we have many uh, different uh, strategies to upgrading the industrial structures. Uh, in 1960s, we are focusing on the petrochemical and textiles sewing, the light industry. In 70s, steel and many machinery, electronics. And 80s, material and part. And 90s, uh, transportation equipment and machine, the automobiles. In 2000, the high-tech industry and 2010, smart advanced and knowledge-based economy industries. So uh, industrial park in Korea contribute 62% uh, of domestic product and 73% of export. So 
uh, eco industry park in Korea is very important economic infrastructure. So tracking the uh, uh, economic development and environmental impact in Korea, in 1960s, we have very uh, poor, the national GDP was less than uh, $100 in 1960s. So in that case, we have uh, the poverty issues. And in civilizations, we have uh, the production related pollutions. And in after that, uh, the, the quality is enhanced, living quality, living standard is increased and uh, reaches accumulation, then the consumption related environmental pollution was a big issue. And right now, we are focusing on how we can maintain the uh, economic and environmental harmoniously. So based on this, uh, the changing uh, environmental policies, the uh, environmental management is totally changing. So initially we have some waste management pollutions and pollution controls and then recycling and uh, pollution prevention. And then in uh, 90s, eight, 1990s, 2000, we are focusing on the clean production and industry ecology. Then right now we are looking for the green growth and zero emission. So in Ministry of Environment, they are very strongly regulated the environment pollutions. But Ministry of Industry, they are stimulating, promote the eco-friendly industrial structures and eco-friendly production activities. So they make us some act on the act on a promotion of transition to environmentally friendly industrial structure based on this act in the act we have focusing on the resource productivity and the cleaner production the manufacturing and uh, eco industrial park and urban mining this is uh, newly uh, included in the the act eco-friendly industry infrastructure uh, law. And after that, we are consulted from UNIDO in nine, uh, 2003, the Korean adopt the EIT uh, model, and then uh, we have a master plan to stepwise to transform traditional industrial park to eco-industrial park. We have three phase, 15 years master plan, in first phase, we have some demonstration stage, and second phase is uh, hub and spoke, and the third phase, we are extending the industry stream by networking to the whole countries. So key concept of the uh, uh, Korean EIT model is the government uh, framework to enabling uh, this idea to realize in the field. Uh, this is based on RNBD. This means that research into business development, research into business development. So for this one, we have the government provide a top-down and bottom-up uh, research proposal and then uh, supporting. And then uh, based on this uh, proposal, we have a, a feasibility study to produce a business model. After that, the based on business model, the investment is attracted by uh, public sectors or private sectors or public private partnership sector together. So this is the very uh, important inventory of the uh, factory. Uh, it can be accumulated from the process and factory and industrial park. So uh, you can see the in the scope. RECP is utilizing for the uh, unique process. And then uh, industrial symbiosis can be uh, connected to uh, factory to factory. And then uh, the industrial symbiosis can be extended to uh, industrial park to urban sectors and also uh, region to region uh, industrial symbiosis and international industrial symbiosis. This uh, international industrial collaboration can be expanded from the unique process to international uh, global trade. So if we have very basic detailed information, we have better uh, business opportunity. But this information is very credential 
and it's very hard to get and attract the companies to working together in this uh, data uh, gathering. This is very big hurdle for uh, scale up the EIP in future. So basically, uh, we uh, the, we are we can our implementation can be step, uh, make a, a three steps. First, we have explored the uh, uh, new network potentials. Based on these potentials, we are uh, starting a feasibility study to produce a business model. A business model is nothing but to make clear how much investment is required, how much pro benefit is produced, how much uh, economic the, the environmental benefit is produced and social benefit is produced. Based on this business model, the decision maker can easily decide to invest. Based on this business model, we attract the investment, especially we are looking for the, uh, the policy uh, financings, which can be supporting the ASCO, WASCO, or the green growth uh, and the zero emission. Uh, based on this, uh, the fundings, we make a MOU and contract and implementation uh, to realize the collaboration of two company or three company networking to be realized. So economic benefit is nothing but before uh, industry symbiosis and after industry symbiosis, how much economic benefit is produced. So economic benefit is nothing but the price of the uh, the sales product, the sales product is produced by resource and energy consumption and waste management cost and then operation cost. So, so sales product minus the uh, resource and energy cost and waste management cost and operating cost is a benefit of the, uh, uh, the company. So uh, before the, the industry symbiosis and after the benefit, the difference is the uh, economic benefit of industry symbiosis. But uh, even the economic benefit is there, if the cost is too high, it can be implemented in your business. So we can look into that uh, issue ratio, uh, economically available, and we can look into the payback period of the, uh, the project. And also based on this uh, industry symbiosis network, we can also consider how much environmental improvement is achieved. So after uh, industrial symbiosis network and before industrial symbiosis network, the difference is that environmental uh, performance enhancement can be quantified. So based on this uh, detailed things, we can include all these things into a uh, business uh, model canvas, then we can make it clear this industrial symbiosis business can be realized. This is one uh, examples, some energy, cases, this is a uh, municipal solid waste, waste incinerator owned by the uh, Usa city. Uh, this uh, capacity is 400 ton per uh, day, and they produce, this facility produce uh, 55 ton per hour steams. But the same amount of steam uh, the, uh, produced in the neighboring uh, petrochemical company, but the cost of this same production is uh, 10 million US dollars, but the steam produced in the municipal incinerator to produce uh, electricity, the price, uh, the cost revenue was a million dollars. So 10 times uh, smaller than the, uh, the, the petrochemical, uh, petrochemical company to produce the steam is uh, 10 million US dollars, but uh, the sales to steam to electric generation uh, is only a million dollars. So I recommend them to uh, steam from incinerator to petrochemical company by uh, in steam networking. So based on this uh, networking, economic benefit was 7.1 billion US dollars. Uh, and then economic, uh, environmental benefit, we can save the uh, 55,000 ton of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And also we can reduce the air pollutant and based on these steams, uh, this company invests uh, 150 billion US dollars to uh, construct a new factory, new filling factory. Then uh, this factory hire 140 uh, 
jobs, 142 billion for their uh, employers. So it's really a win-win-win process, win-win-win uh, story. And this is another story for uh, four companies assuring uh, their energy. So Korea PTG, they produce a very high uh, pressure steam facility they have, but uh, the product is changing due to the market uh, competitiveness. So the Korea PTG changing their product from A to B, then they don't need uh, high pressure steams. So they need uh, medium and low level steam is required, but they have very high pressure steam facility. So they produce high pressure steam and let down and use uh, to be a uh, low and medium steams. But I recommend them to sell their high pressure steams to uh, SKC, which uh, they need very high pressure steam. And then uh, the very low and medium range steams they need are imported from uh, KP Chemicals and Hanzo uh, EME, which is excess of the uh, factories. So by this type of collaboration, economic we can produce economic benefit and environmental benefit together. So by doing this uh, industrial symbiosis networking we, in this small petrochemical area, we have five steps of expansion. Uh, we can reduce uh, almost 50% uh, of energy in this petrochemical uh, uh, industrial park. Another one is that zinc uh, papers and uh, Zinc smelter and paper mill company. This company is uh, six kilometers away as they don't know each other, but uh, we know that uh, energy and material situation of both company. We negotiated to, uh, we help them to negotiate to make uh, this energy and uh, CO2 networking. So uh, based on this uh, energy and CO2 networking, uh, we can produce economic benefit and environmental benefit together. So CO2 is utilized in paper company as uh, producing the calcium carbonate, uh, which is utilized as a filler for uh, paper milk uh, production. Another case is we can, uh, material cases, we can use that uh, zinc powder and uh, zinc dross is the, the formulated to uh, zinc flake to be utilizing as uh, raw materials for uh, last resistant uh, paint product. So this can be uh, another uh, industrial symbiosis uh, to enhance the productivity and to reduce the pollution and uh, emissions. Another case is gas can be also utilized. Hydrogen gas from the, uh, the refinery can be produced as a sodium hydrogen sulfide. This is very strong uh, reducing agent to uh, utilizing as a uh, heavy metal removal in wastewater treatment process in zinc smelters and uh, LS Nico. Before this uh, networking, NASH and uh, in Korea zinc and uh, LS Nico is imported from uh, foreign countries. Based on this uh, production, they are reducing their import of this uh, NASH and hydrogen sulfide. Wastewater can be also recycled and very different level. We can use uh, UF and RO1 and 2 and EDI systems. Based on the company's requirement, we can utilize diverse level of the water quality can be uh, connected uh, by industry symbiosis. So as you can see in this, uh, Korean case, we can have many diverse uh, industrial symbiosis opportunities in energy sectors, in the material sectors, in also in water sectors. So uh, through our uh, national EIP program in Ulsan, we can uh, make a huge uh, productivity enhancement and pollution reduction uh, in summarize we have succeeded in 34 projects, uh, this industrial symbiosis during the uh, Korean uh, National EIP program. Total uh, research funding supported from the Korean government is 4 million. Based on this 4 million, we can attract investment 245 uh, million US dollars. 
and profit is 1.143 billion US dollar annually. And we can deduce 66,000 ton of uh, carbon emission reduction. Huge carbon emission is reduced based on very small uh, carbon to supporting uh, funding, carbon research funding for industrial shimbarishi. So uh, based on uh, Korean uh, evolution of the Korean EIP is from the resource efficiency cleanup production in uh, 1990s. And then in, in 2000, we start the EIP program, uh, phase one, two, three. And then 2016, the project is finished and then EIP project is outsourced as a uh, consulting business. Right now, uh, national program is finished, but the, this concept is uh, privatized and then continuously uh, pursued in uh, industrial park. By doing this uh, industrial park innovation, Korean can maintain uh, economic strength. Uh, we, the Korean government, need not to moving out the heavy and uh, polluted industry to developing countries. We can maintain the polluted energy intensive businesses in industrial park in Korea and innovate uh, in industry park together they, with the uh, tenant company and community together. We are re really uh, innovating the uh, industrial infrastructures, uh, innovating the production uh, patterns. So this concept is uh, welcomed by uh, many uh, developing countries and also international organizations. So uh, we are working with the UNIDO and World Bank to make an international framework for eco-industrial park. Korean is uh, very important partners of this uh, program. We already uh, welcomed many developing countries to uh, supporting to uh, eco-industrial park Korean model. Uh, we have started in 2013 from Bangladesh and then Vietnam, China, uh, Malaysia, Turkey, and Myanmar. And last year, uh, I'm uh, consulting to Colombia and Indonesia. So uh, based on this uh, success story, many developing countries can be benefit uh, of this uh, industrial park innovation. This is nothing but the productivity enhancement. This is totally uh, the eco-innovation and social innovation and totally uh, the, the, the concept must be upgraded, not just uh, growth. We have to look into that uh, sustainable growth and green growth. The eco-industry park is nothing but to uh, targeting the green growth and the eco uh, innovations. So in Western countries, eco-industry park is Another lane is eco innovation park. Eco industry park is kind of collective innovation with the uh, tenant companies and uh, with the uh, community together. So uh, the finally, I'm talking that uh, the Earth is closed system has very uh, limited carrying capacity. So uh, we have to think about uh, the production concept differently. We have to enhance the productivity to uh, eco-innovation. The historical uh, human development is totally connected by productivity enhancement. But this enhancement is more focusing on the production and growth. But recently, we have to look into that sustainable uh, development. So eco-industrial park is nothing but a, a sustainable industrial park development process based on uh, RCP and industrial symbiosis and circular economy. And the Korean economy, uh, eco-industrial park is an uh, example of collective innovation of tenant companies uh, to enhance the productivity and industrial society through uh, industrial symbiosis business model. That's it. Thank you. For your attention. Thank you very much for the presentation, Dr. Barr. Now we'd like to move on to the Q&A session. Viewers are encouraged to send their questions or comments to the YouTube chat box. We welcome your active participation. Dr. Park, I have some questions for you. So first, um, can you provide some information about the role of technology innovation in eco-industrial parks and how it promotes both 
productivity and environmental goals. Okay, technical innovation is nothing but to changing the pattern. As you can see from the, uh, the human history development, uh, from uh, Stone Age to Bronze Age to Iron Age, this means the changing the, uh, the patterns of the production. So uh, the eco-industry part is totally different from traditional industrial activities. This is totally uh, the upgrading the production uh, patterns. Uh, so that's why the uh, technological innovation is uh, very critical to uh, implement the eco-industrial concept in your world. Thank you for your response. It's clear that technology plays a pivotal role in driving sustainability and productivity in eco-industrial parks. So um, my next question is, um, what are the main success factors of eco-industrial parks in the Republic of Korea? For example, um, is it support from the government or cooperation with corporations or other factors? Yeah, there are so many. Uh, the eco-industrial park, the concept is very easy. You can see the one uh, waste from one company can be utilized as a, a resource and energy source for other company. And this can be a win-win strategy. But as you can see, uh, this uh, environmental information uh, is very credential to uh, the company. And energy information and the technological information is very credential to the company. So to uh, connecting uh, to this company is not so easy in real field. So there is, uh, in the world, there are so many uh, EIP demonstration projects is operated more than uh, 400 uh, EIP is reported, but very less is uh, reported to succeed. This is why uh, the industrial biases concept is easy, but to implement, to uh, make it happen is a business. So Korean EIP uh, project is nothing but to produce research into business development. So based on this uh, very strong, very detailed uh, business models, uh, the investment and uh, revenue is exactly calculated and decision maker can uh, easily decide it. So the key is that, key is the, uh, the key of the EIP is that very well designed national framework and also the supporting systems, like uh, uh, R&D funding for to implementing, uh, to finding the feasibility study, and also uh, the funding to realizing the energy saving and water uh, saving project. I see, thank you for highlighting the success factors of eco-industrial parks in Korea. So the points you've mentioned are important components in creating an enabling environment for the establishment of eco-industrial parks. And they could be also key factors for other countries to establish eco-industrial parks. Then um, could you maybe elaborate on the, the company's roles or the government's roles, like its policies and regulations in promoting the establishment and growth of eco-industrial parks? Yes, the government role is that uh, to uh, managing the common asset uh, very fairly. So this means that uh, environmental uh, the, the pollution is very, string, uh, very strongly regulated. And then in the other hand, industrial activity must be strongly promoted to be incentivized to uh, develop uh, to develop advanced technology to apply in the eco-industrial park. So eco-industrial park uh, must have managed by two tools. One is that uh, stick and one is carrot. We have stick and carrot policies in, um, in, in this EIP implementations. So the government also provides the regulations and also incentives, and private sectors have uh, must participate in this uh, the government policies to survive, because that uh, due to the uh, environmental regulation in global society and uh, GHG emission 
cooperation in global society, the company must be more uh, sustainable and energy efficient and resource efficient, then they can survive. So the role of government uh, is uh, as a regulator and uh, uh, facilitators and the, uh, the business sectors is more the entrepreneurship is required to uh, to uh, to pursue the uh, the uh, future uh, directions to uh, sustainable and uh, energy uh, resource uh, efficient uh, society. Thank you for shedding light on the key role of government and companies and their regulation in promoting eco-industrial parks. Um, it's quite clear that supportive regulatory environment is a key driver for their establishment and growth. And that what challenges might industries face when transitioning to an eco-industrial park model and how can these challenges be addressed? Yeah, eco-industrial park is not achieved by uh, a single company or a small companies. Eco-industrial park is kind of a, a local innovation and community uh, innovation to uh, make this uh, industry infrastructure, which is very uh, core element of uh, economic in infrastructure of the region, must be uh, innovative together. So uh, we have very uh, strong uh, common commitment from the political sectors. And also we have to a uh, very strong uh, the collaboration framework all the uh, stakeholders can participate. Uh, this must be very important. You have to be provide a very uh, nice uh, the polish, uh, the framework, and also we have very nice incentives. And also, in the other hand, we have some uh, regulations to uh, the company can be happily on board the common vision of eco-industrial development. Thank you for your response to the challenges of transitioning to the eco-industrial park model and for sharing your insights on how to address these challenges. Your response highlights the importance of considering these challenges in the context of specific cases and tailoring solutions accordingly. And then in what ways can the concept of eco-industrial parks be scaled up to have a broader impact on regional or national industrial landscapes? Okay, so... Uh... You know that uh, due to the uh, the pandemic and also the, uh, the Russia and uh, Ukraine war, uh, there is a great uh, changing in supply chains, and then many advanced countries also uh, restart and reshaping their uh, industry infrastructures. So uh, many developing countries uh, have to. Uh, look into this changing environment. Uh, this means that uh, the industrial competitiveness is more uh, urgent and more critical to uh, survive in this uh, very uh, dynamic uh, the economic world. So uh, this means that um, all the uh, industrial park, even in developing countries, uh, have to more looking into that uh, environmental issues and resource issues, energy issues, uh, more seriously to uh, uh, stronger in uh, the productivity and uh, uh, the environmental uh, perspective. So without that, uh, only the low labor cost or loose environmental regulation is not enough to maintain uh, industry infrastructure in their territory to uh, to utilizing uh, as a economic growth engine. So uh, you have to thinking that uh, now we uh, even in developing countries they have to very seriously looking into eco innovation in this park. It's a must. Thank it's, you. Not, it's it's another option. It's a must. Oh. Okay. Thank you for explaining the potential for scaling up the concept of it of eco-industrial parks to have a broader impact on regional or national industrial landscapes. So finally, it's the last question. 
Uh, how do you view the future of eco-industrial parks in Asia or worldwide and their contributions to productivity and sustainability? Yeah, the, uh, right now the, uh, the necessity of the EIP and eco-innovation is well uh, appreciated in the world, but uh, we have very small success story. Uh, like uh, Korea and Japan, Echo Town and uh, China EIP have some success story, tangible success story. So uh, uh, this is the right time to uh, start up, to scale up and mainstreaming this uh, uh, eco-industrial development in uh, the East Asia and also in the, in the world. So we already have some success story. So uh, we can have a uh, good uh, collaboration in international organization like uh, UNIDO and uh, World Bank. Uh, they make uh, some international framework and also APO is focusing on the productivity, but uh, uh, APO, I hope the APO have more uh, interested and more uh, focusing on the uh, this uh, eco innovation uh, uh, activity of eco industrial park. Uh, the the eco industrial park is the integral uh, activity of, of productivity. So uh, this is the time uh, we have to work together. So the future of industrial parks hold great promise for enhancing both productivity and sustainability on a broader scale. We mm -hmm. look forward to seeing how these developments continue to shape a more sustainable and productive future for industries worldwide. Thank you for sharing your insights on enhancing productivity and sustainability through eco-industrial parks. So your expertise in and vision for this field are truly inspiring. Dr. Park, do you have a final message to our viewers? Okay, so eco industrial park or the eco innovation is nothing to nothing but to a sustainable development for next generation. So uh, this is a role of our generations, and we have to disseminate, scale up, and disseminate this uh, uh, sustainable concept to the world, uh, hand in hand, and working together for our next generation. Hope we can working together for this uh, ambitious vision of sustainable world. Thank you. Thank you so much for that message, Dr. Park. We really appreciate your time. Today, we learned about how eco-industrial parks serve as catalysts for sustainable development, driving innovation, fostering partnerships, and ultimately paving the way for a more resilient, harmonious co coexistence between industry and nature. I hope that this session inspired all of you. The APO will continue to broadcast the P-Talk series on different topics related to productivity. Please join us next time as well. Thank you very much for watching today and we'll be looking forward to seeing you again. Stay safe and stay healthy and goodbye for now.